Well, we've just seen the effect that we're going to create here. And what we are doing is using a combination of animation by hand and simulation to create that effect. So the, for the first part of the effect, as you can see, the pieces are being animated by hand. And then for the second part of the effect, uh, the RBD simulation takes over and they fall to the ground. And this is very similar to the methods that were used in the series of videos I did called DOPS keyframes. And indeed, uh, this tutorial is inspired by a question that was placed against one of those videos, which is how you could use the technique explained there, not with an RBD point object, but with an RBD fractured object. So what I've done is I've just taken a simple cube and then I've used the shatter shelf tool to create uh, this network here. And what the shatter shelf, shelf tool does is create a set of points called chunk centers. And we can see here we've got 10 points. And then this is fed into a Voronoi fracture SOP to create the pieces or chunks of geometry. And we can see that we've got uh, 10 groups, piece 0 to piece 9. And those groups represent the individual chunks. Those are groups of primitives. Each group is a separate chunk. So we've got the essentials of what we need to animate the pieces using movement of points. Because what we need is a set of pieces and for each piece to have an associated point. Well, you might think that's very easy, so let's just see what this would look like if we brought this directly into an Autodot network. But first, let me explain how I'm animating the points. Now, you could use any point animation, but in this case, I'm bringing those points that uh, are created by uh, the Shatter Shelf tool and then I'm bringing them into a pop network and at the first frame I'm creating a single particle for each point. Uh, and then I use an interact pop which is active for all frames below frame 30 so let me just revert back to the first frame and we can see that that forces, there's a bit of cam camera animation here, but we can see that that's forcing the particles apart and then at frame 30 we just set the velocity to zero and then here at the SOP level I then have an animated transform on my points which just rotates them round between frame 30 and frame 70 and then a null points out. Now we could use any animation here this is just an example of some animation so that we can test out how things work so we wanted to see what would happen if we just created our fractured box, used the RBD fracture, fractured object uh, shelf tool here to bring this into DOPS. And that's what I've done. And the result is in this Autodot network. Uh, you get a fractured box object, which is an RBD fractured object. That's bringing in each piece as a separate RBD object. So if we have a look at the details view we can see that we have piece naught to piece 9. Each of those chunks is now a separate RBD object. And I've added a couple of nodes which are identical to the ones that are in uh, the DOPS keyframe series of videos earlier on. Uh, and that's an active value node. Uh, and an active value node determines whether or not a particular object will be simulated or not. If the active value is 1, then it will be simulated. If the active value is less than 1, then it won't be simulated. And in this case, we set the active value uh, to 1 when the frame number is greater than 70. So here at frame 57, we can see the active value is 0. And at frame 73, the active value is 1. And we need to make sure this is set always so that it uh, is evaluated at every frame. 
So that controls whether or not our chunks are going to be simulated or not. Um, when they're not being simulated, we need to do something to animate them. And we can use a point position node. So in this case, uh, we need to set the time to set always. And we need to know which point number corresponds to which RBD object. Unfortunately, just as with the RBD point object, which is the subject of the earlier videos, when we use an RBD fractured object, each object has a bit of data here called copy info and a copy number. And as it happens, the copy number corresponds to the point number within those points uh, that we saw earlier. So it associates each of the pieces of RBD geometry with a particular point. And we just need to retrieve that information and this is what this formula here is doing. Let me edit it so we can see it. So the dot option function from the current dot network and the current object finds the copy info data and the copy number and it puts that here as the point number. And this is active when the frame is less than 70. So after frame 70 this is going to become inactive and we're no longer going to animate our pieces using the points. And then the rest of the network is just a standard rigid body solver and a ground plane. So this should work pretty well, one might think. Uh, we could just start this off and see what happens. Uh, well, let's rewind it. And we can see at frame one we've got a problem. And the problem is that instead of the intact box that we would expect to find, all of these pieces are already separated out. And we can see that uh, if I turn off my point position object, uh, node rather, we get a box that's intact. So something's going wrong uh, with the point position. And the reason it's going wrong is because actually these points and the primitives are not positioned in a way which allows them to work perfectly off the, off the bat. Instead, we need to play about a little bit with the position of these chunks. And that's the only thing you really need to do to get this to work. And what we can do is use a for each SOP. And I've got one here. I've disabled it, which is why this is happening. If I enable it, we can see that we get back to the box that we would expect to see. So what's going on inside this for each? Well, what we're doing is cycling through each group. And the group mask is piece star. So it's going to go through every one of these groups piece naught to piece nine and as you know the for each shop sop just processes the primitives in that particular group it does one group at a time and processes the primitives within that group so for the first uh, set of primitives we would find for example uh, here that we would have 11 primitives first time round inside the for each sop because it would just be processing the primitives that belong to that group. So what do we want to do? Well we want to account for the fact that when we use the key keyframe point positions later in the dot network we're going to be adding the position of the associated point to the position of the chunk. So if we want the chunk to stay where it is we need to move it to take away that position information. Uh, and we do this here with the transform SOP and we've got these three expressions. Let me enlarge this so we can look at them more easily. Uh, and it looks complicated uh, but all we're doing uh, is taking the point position of the point associated with this primitive group and we're subtracting that point position from the position of this primitive group. So we're moving the primitive group by the negative of the point position so that when uh, in the dot network we add back the point position uh, the result is that the uh, primitive group will be back where it started.
So how do we find out uh, the point associated with the current primitive group? Well, the Voronoi fracture swap sets up a primitive attribute which tells you uh, which point is associated with this set of primitives. And that primitive attribute is stored in a variable whose name is orig point with two underscores in front of it. Orig point or origin point is the name of uh, the attribute which contains the point number. So the first thing we need to do is fetch that attribute. Now it doesn't matter which primitive we fetch that attribute from because they're all going to have the same value of orig point because they're all part of the same primitive group. So we have a look in the each one node, which is the node directly preceding this one. We have a look at the zeroth primitive number. As, as I said, it doesn't matter which primitive we look at, but every group of primitive is going to have at least one primitive and will therefore have a primitive with number zero. And then we find the attribute called orig point and we're finding the zeroth component of it because it's only, only got one component. So this is retrieving the value of the point number that we're interested in for this group. And then we're just using a simple point expression uh, which retrieves from that points out null uh, from the point number that's associated with this group the position information and this is finding the first component of that the x component of the position information and then we're translating by the negative of that and obviously for the second here we find the second component we're finding component 1 the y value in other words and then for the third one uh, we find the z value uh, component number two. So this is translating uh, the primitive, all the primitives in the primitive group so that when we combine that back with the point position in DOPS we get back where we started. And we can see uh, that this is going to work if we go back up to our object level and into our auto.network what we should see is that as this moves out uh, and we should look through the camera so this is frame th up to frame 30 it's expanding then it rotates and then at frame 70 the simulation takes over and it falls down and uh, bounces on the ground So that's how to use point position animation to control the position of chunks of some fractured geometry.